Hey guys, how's it going? I was looking through my subscriptions on YouTube here, and I saw this video that Wayne Crook posted, and it's on the body, soul, and spirit. And I've already debunked all this stuff, but I just want to go over this anyways, and I'll go ahead and play this video. It's about five minutes long. I'll just make some comments. Wayne Crook left some comments in the uh, in his comments on this anyway, so I'll just play this video. Today I want to talk to you about the body, soul, and spirit in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. It says, uh, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow. That's the body. So you have a soul, a spirit, and a body. You also see in First uh, Thessalonians chapter five. And it's funny that he mentions uh, the joints and marrow, and he says that's the body. What about the thoughts and intentions of the heart? Because that passage goes on, and that verse is very highly figurative. It says the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. In what sense is the word of God sharp as compared to a sword? It's obviously figurative. Uh, verse uh, 20, 23, it says, And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit, soul, and... And it's also funny because he tried, they try to say that uh, spirit and soul are two ontologically distinct entities or parts and then he says that joints and marrow represent you know one ontologically distinct part of the body like okay the body be preserved blameless at the coming of the lord jesus christ so again you see the emphasis of body soul and spirit and here we go. I pretty much said this. This is the only two verses that anybody who teaches this false trichotomy doctrine are mainly going to go to is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. Neither one of these verses teach three ontologically distinct entities in man. It doesn't teach that. Okay, That has to be read into it. Now, why this is important to doctrine to understand is because as we are uh, uh, learning who we are, we know that we have a body because we physically can see it. Our soul is our mind, our will, and our emotions. This is just crap that's been regurgitated over and over again. And our spirit is the real you the real person inside that isn't true and so we are spirit beings housed in a body and so what happened when we accepted the christ our spirit was uh, separated from god or in sin in separation from god but then god gave us a new spirit 100 percent righteous and desires to obey god and that's why you find in romans uh, Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 7, seven a, look a look at how this actually works out in real life. So in Romans 7, uh, verse uh, 16 and 17, Paul says, uh, If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that it's good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that indwells me. And so what happens is there's still an independence around our spirit. And that's in, inside of our And you know, it's really interesting when they try to teach that when a person soul. gets saved, that God gives them a new spirit. And because they're trying to teach that the spirit is an ontologically distinct entity in man, okay? They're not saying figuratively or this or that. They're saying, you know, there's three different parts in man, and God makes a new spirit in them. It makes a new part in them. Okay, so it's kind of almost like Calvinism. It's like, uh, you know, it's just really messed up. I can't even, I'd have to sit down and try to, like, think of all the intricacies here of what they're, like, trying to actually teach, what it's really saying. 
but you know it's not biblical. Is the point. Um, so let's just continue. So this is when you uh, became a new creature. And so this is when you uh, became a new creature in Christ, a new creation. Your spirit was made 100% righteous, but your body and soul uh, continue to be able to be used by the evil one. See, so, so that's what it means. Then if they got this higher well, sense of the spirit, like the spirit is like so what happens you know, is the highest part that of as you he, said, uh, he says the spirit is 100% righteous and the soul and the body are still corruptible or whatever. The Bible doesn't teach that. Um, so, you know, it's just really interesting. And, you know, he, he, and you got to realize that, you know, he keeps talking and talking and saying, you know, this fact and this fact, but where's all the verses for all these things that teach exactly what he's saying? They're not there. To live out your life. It's just regurgitated crap, that's all it is. To live out your life, it starts to take over the soul, uh, the body and soul. And as it takes over, you get to see the spirit become stronger and stronger in the person. And the spirit is uh, has the uh, character traits, the very character of Christ, the righteousness of Christ. And you get to see... So you got to be You're careful too of people drawing charts and pictures like that. this because you know when they give demonstrations so like this, they can be looking and seeing and stuff. And but you know, what really matters is where does all this stuff taught in the Bible? You know, if it lines up with Scripture, then fine. If it doesn't, then you know, it's done. wrong. It's done. Uh, first eleven chapters of Romans. Is See, done. It's done. Uh, the first eleven chapters of Romans is basically dealing with the spirit of man. So from Romans wow. 1 to chapter 11, the spirit of man. But then in Romans 12, it talks about, okay, therefore, since I've described all that to you, Paul says, I want you to present your bodies. As you see, again, yeah, there are plenty of verses that talk about God, man and having a spirit or man's spirit. Your but the Bible doesn't talk about the spirit being an ontologically distinct entity in man. Okay. So you have to understand the difference there. Spirit is synonymous with soul. It's the immaterial part of man. There are two parts, the material and the immaterial. Transform your soul. Transform your soul. Transform your soul. To transform it, that word that's used there, is metamorphose, metamorphosize it, which means take it from a, a butter a caterpillar caterpillar to a butterfly in its thinking. So you used to be evil, no good, and now you've been made new in Christ. And so you must think about how that actually begins to work. And we're transformed, or we renew our mind by the Word of God, by the very truth of God. And God himself becomes our source of strength and understanding. Okay, and that's it. Nothing was taught in this video soul except for lies. Work together. Okay, and you know, very little scripture, as he says, founding a good teaching on the body, soul, and spirit from a biblical perspective was proven difficult. Tons of New Age garbage. This was the best that I could find. <laughs> if anyone knows of a good teaching on this, please let me know. It would be much appreciated. There are no good teachings on it because it's a false doctrine. And so... Here's Wayne Crook, he posts, the difference between the soul and spirit of man in more depth. The soul and spirit are the two primary immaterial parts that scripture ascribes to mankind. Okay, No, it's one immaterial part, and the words soul and spirit are synonymous for the same immaterial part. He's clearly teaching here that they are two different parts in man. The Bible doesn't teach that. It can be confusing to attempt to discern the precise differences between the two. That's because they are the same part, they're not two ontologically distinct parts. The word spirit refers only to the immaterial facet of mankind. Okay, man has a spirit, but we are not spirits. However, in scripture, only believers are said to be spiritually alive, while unbelievers are spiritually dead. Okay, 
speaking of their relationship with God. Okay. In Paul's writing, the spiritual is pivotal to the life of the believer. Spirit is the element in man that gives us the ability to have an intimate relationship with God. Whenever the word spirit is used, it refers to the immaterial part of man that connects with God, who himself is spirit. So, I mean, basically, I've already covered this in the study that I did on the dichotomy versus trichotomy. And, uh, you know, that's what they try to say. They try to say the spirit is what connects us to God or whatever. The spirit is how we have communion with God, not the soul. But then I gave verses that, that shows that the soul has communion with God. So they're synonymous. But people are going to believe what they want to believe. Okay. Um, so goes on to say the word soul can refer both to the immaterial and material aspects of man. Okay. Soul can be used in a, uh, you know, a figure of speech as, you know, like metonymy, as like the part speaking for the whole. Okay. So you have to really understand figures of speeches and stuff. But no, the soul really, you know, if we're going to break it down to what are the ontologically distinct parts of man, you know, you've got body and soul. Basically, you've got the material and the immaterial. So the soul isn't the immaterial part of man, but it's used in figures of speech where the part is used for the whole. But that's a figure of speech. So when we're saying ontologically, I mean, like, what, it means the nature of being. Okay, we get down to, you know, what are the true parts? You know, not, not considering, you know, figures of speech. So the soul truly is the immaterial part of man, but it's figuratively used sometimes for the, the whole man. Okay. Unlike human beings having a spirit, man beings are souls. <laughs> okay. So again, you know, they're confusing like figures of speech here. They're saying that spirit is a part of man, but man is a soul. Well, wait a minute. I thought that body, soul, and spirit were three parts. So it doesn't make any sense. In its most basic sense, the word soul means life. However, okay, uh, beyond the essential meaning, the Bible speaks of the soul in many contexts. One of these is in relation to mankind's eagerness to sin. We have a sinful nature, and our souls are tainted with sin. The soul, as the life essence of the body, is removed at the time of physical death. The soul, as with the spirit, is the center of many spiritual and emotional experiences. So, right there they say basically that the soul and the spirit are synonymous. The word soul can refer to the whole person, whether alive, on earth, or in the afterlife. Soul and spirit are connected but separable. <laughs> So they're taking Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, literally, and not only are they trying to take it literally, but they're like adding meaning to it, to what it's not even saying. The soul is the essence of a person's being. It is who we are. The spirit is the immaterial part of man that connects with God. But the soul connects with God. So, you know. I'm just trying to show just how stupid this is and that people are teaching exactly, you know, what I was saying they're teaching and right here we go. And so, but people are going to believe whatever they want to believe, no matter how many scriptures are given to refute it, you know, not, no matter how many times the Bible, uh, there, how many times, you know, we see verses that speak of two parts of man, uh, they're always going to go back to Hebrews 4, chapter 12, and 1 Thessalonians, 
and uh, use their false interpretation of those verses. And add, they're just adding to the Bible. This is just, you know, misrepresenting many things within the Bible. So I just thought I would share that, and God bless.